special edition of The Amazing Art Show. I'm your host, Angie Bean. We have got a Holiday Express show for you today. Now, Holiday Express, you're thinking, what in the world am I talking about? Well, we have got three very quick little fun projects for you to do that are all kind of oriented around the holidays today. So, normally, I tell you, you know, with the magic of TV, how fast I can do it here, but if it's going to take you longer in real life, well, just put on your seatbelt because today it's going to go even faster than it normally does. But we're going to get some great projects done and some really good ideas that you might want to use for presents or gifts or anything like that. And they're just really, really super fun to make. So let's get started on our first one. Your list as far as your supplies today, we're going to put that up for you so that we don't have to go through it each, you know, one by one. So the first one that we're going to be doing today is going to be your silver ornaments. So we're going to be using a polymer clay. This is like one of my favorite things to use. And this is Sculpey brand polymer clay. And the way polymer clay works is you have to, when you first break it off, it's kind of brittle and it's kind of crumbly. But as you get it in your hand and you're going to knead the clay basically, which means you're just going to work it. And if you have any bread makers at your house, you knead the dough just like you knead this clay. So you're going to just work it. You're getting out air bubbles. You're moistening it up. It's getting, you know, it's not quite as brittle and hard because it's getting softened. So once you've got it where it's a lot softer than it is, you know, when you first started, you're ready to kind of roll it into a ball. It doesn't have to be perfect because you're just going to smash it. So smash it with your hand. It's good to put a piece of plastic down or maybe some wax paper out of the kitchen, saran wrap, anything like that will work. And if you want, if you want to get really particular, you can get a rolling pin and you can roll it out just like mom or dad or grandma or somebody might roll out the dough. But for this one, I'm just going to just do it kind of as is. I'm going to be using a, a big shape so that you can kind of see what I'm doing a little bit better, but the smaller shapes work too. These are like little miniature cookie cutters. So you can do them really small. These are just kind of symmetrical shapes. But over here, I've got, you know, if you wanted to do holiday shapes, you know, there's all different kinds and you can get them in packs. They're all on sale right now, so you can get them for a really good price. So I'm going to take my little cookie cutter and I'm going to press it down into the clay. And I usually like to give it a couple little wiggles. And then I usually pull off my extra clay. And now I'm going to push my little star shape out and don't worry about if you get fingerprints in it or anything like that and if I were you usually I'll do a couple at a time so I'll re-roll this and I'll press it back out again and I'll do a couple so the next part is kind of the most fun part I think and that's where you're going to put some kind of a texture into the clay so remember a texture is it's going to give you some kind of a, some kind of a feeling so it's smooth it's bumpy it's lumpy it's sharp it's you know pointy so you want to think of something that you can press into the clay so you could use rubber stamps work really really good I've got several of those I've also got these um, texture plates that are for things like this where when you press it into it it's going to give you some kind of a pattern so I've got all kinds of things in there if you don't have any of that the bottom of your shoe has some great texture on it so you could use that um, I'm going to do, I've got this little rubber stamp here and it's just got some lines and things in it. So I'm going to just take this and I'm going to press it firmly down onto my clay. You want to give it a few little wiggles and then very carefully you're going to take it off. And you're going to need some kind of a tool, a toothpick works great and you're going to want to put a hole in it. And usually what I tell the kids is kind of put the hole in and then if you'll kind of wiggle whatever instrument you use, just kind of wiggle it around a little bit and it'll give you a hole because you're going to cook this. And as you cook it, it, you know, the hole will get a little bit smaller as it cooks. So um, you want to make sure that you make it a little bit bigger than what you really need for it to be. So kind of stretch it a little bit. All right, so um, you are going to cook this in a little toaster oven at around 250 to 300 for like 10 minutes. It goes super, super fast. And when you get done, you're going to have, you know, shapes that look like this, but they're going to be, you know, super, super hard because you cook them. So the next part, you are going, now this is, sounds really, really weird, but it's super, super fun. At the hardware store, they have got this aluminum foil tape. 
and I saw this stuff and I was like, oh my gosh, that's the coolest stuff in the whole wide world. I have no idea what I'm going to do with it, but I've had so much fun with it since. So it's not very expensive. Mom or dad might even have some out in the garage. You might check with them and you're going to get a little bit of that. You get a lot of bang for your buck and you're going to just kind of cut it into some smaller little strips. And then you're going to very carefully, I've got some clay in there, you're going to very carefully peel the back off. So you have to kind of find the back and very carefully peel it off. And then you want to place it on top of the clay and you can kind of mash it down with your fingers. And then we're going to talk about edges in just a second. So mash it down really, really well. And then I want you to kind of look at it and if you've got a place where it needs to curve, you may want to do a little cut with your scissors. So I don't have too many places that need to curve, so I can probably actually just make this one work as is. So I'm just going to kind of fold it down. I'm going to end up with a little bit of a line there. It doesn't have to be like super perfect or smooth. And just kind of work your way around. You're going to have some places where you're going to have clay still exposed, and that's okay. We're going to work on those in a minute. And you're going to press this down, all the way down. Press this down onto the back and get it to lay down as flat as you can. Your extra pieces that you have, you're going to basically piece onto the back so that you don't have any of the clay left showing. So if you've got like a little place here, take a little bit of this. You don't even have to use all of it. Just take a little bit, wrap it around, and then trim off what you don't need and save it. And then you can actually, this is a good example of where you might need to do a little cut. So I'm going to do a cut right here so that I can get this to lay down flat. And then I'm going to take this piece and it'll lay down on top of that. And then I can take this and I'm just going to keep piecing this until I get the whole thing covered. All right. But remember, we're going super speedy today. So I'm stopping right there. All right. Next thing, you are going to need some kind of a stick that maybe has a point on it, toothpick, a small brush that has a small tip on the end of it so that you can use it to press into the clay. So the first thing I usually do, use my fingers and I really press into the clay really, really well. And then that's when you're going to get your stick. Now it's going to look pretty good just doing that, but you're going to get your stick and kind of just start going over everything. And as you go over it, you're going to start to see your pattern that you, your texture that you pressed into it will start to appear. Now, it takes some work because at first you do it and you're like, oh yeah, that looks great. But if you keep working at it, it'll get to looking even better. So it's one of those things that kind of takes some time. So I'm going to show you a couple that I've already been working on. So here's one that has snowflakes. And this is after many, many, many minutes of, you know, really getting in here and getting into all these little fine little crevices. All right, and then here is another one, and I'm going to show you this one because I've got one last little, two little steps for you. If your mom or dad happens to have some of these little rings, it's called a jump ring, and you can find them in like the little jewelry section. They have them at Walmart in their jewelry area, and basically if you will take it and if you don't pull it apart like this, but you just want to push one side back and one side towards you at the same time, so you go like this. All right, so now if you can see that, it's kind of open. All right, and then that gets slipped into, and I don't have one that I can slip it into, but you're going to slip it into the hole that you made with your little stick thing, and then these slip right back together. And now you can hang this on a gift tag or on your Christmas tree, anything fun like that. All right, the other thing that you can do is take a little bit of paint and you can paint down inside where you got all of these little details in here. I'll just put a little bit right here so you can see it. Let it dry for a second. And then if you will very carefully come back with a little piece of paper towel, and this may be too wet, but I'll try. And you're just gonna kinda take it off the top and then it stays in the little crevices and it gives you a really, really kinda neat look on it. And you could do any color that you would like to do in there. All right, moving on to project two. Are you ready? This one's one of my favorites too. All right, sticks. And you're thinking sticks, really? 
go outside, gather up some sticks. They can be thick, they can be thin, they can be bumpy, they can have little branches on them, whatever. All right? And what you're going to be doing is you're going to be making a star shape. All right? So you know in school, everybody's like, oh, I can't draw a star, it's so hard, I need help. And you know that little way that you can kind of cheat where you kind of, you know, you make it that way? Well, you're going to be doing that with your sticks, all right? So if you will kind of start to lay things out, so you're going to start out with two that are kind of making the top of a triangle. And you may have to kind of move your sticks around, so be flexible as to how you're going to do things. So you want to kind of use your longest ones where it needs to be the longest, obviously. And then, you know, some that are more straight work better to go in these areas, okay? So I've now got my pieces all kind of laid out, all right? You can make it bigger, you can make it skinnier, you could, you know, just by adjusting these things, you can make it look any way you would like to, all right? And you're going to be using the hot glue gun. And I will probably burn myself while we're doing this because every time I use one, I burn myself. But I'm going to do my best. All right, so I'm going to just barely lift, and you just barely squeeze a little bit of glue out. And then just lay the stick back down and let it dry for a second. And then I usually like to do kind of the main base part first. So I'm going to come down to this end this time. My glue gun is not wanting to squirt glue out. There it goes. And I'm going to lay that back down again. I'm going to do the same thing over here. And you want to make sure that you're getting it at a point where the stick will actually rest on it. Okay? So I've now got that done. And now I'm going to come back and I'm going to do these other parts. So I'm going to come back in here. I think I'm going to do this part first. This little bar. I'm just going to lift it up momentarily. Put little dots down. There's one. There's two, there's three. You don't have to do one here, but I kind of like to just for a little bit of extra support. And then right here, right there. All right, so now you gotta let that dry for a second. And then you are going to be doing, it's kind of like a milk paint. Now you say milk paint, it doesn't have milk in it. There actually is a milk paint that does have milk in it, but we're not using a milk paint. But we're kind of simulating it like we are. So basically what I've got here is just a really light color of acrylic paint. It's already kind of milky looking anyways. So that works out really good because it kind of gives us that look anyways. But then you're going to add some water to it. So the consistency of it, it's real watery. You know, it's just kind of like colored water, basically. All right? So you are going to come in, and you're just going to paint everything with your pretend milk paint. And you're going to cover everything, and that means front, back, everything. Sometimes you even have to do, you know, one or two little coats, all right? And then we're going to move that one to the side, because we're moving super, super fast today. Lightning speed. All right, so I've got this one, and I have got it all painted. I actually did two coats on some of my sticks because they, um, they just didn't take the paint quite as well. So you may need to do two coats. The next thing that you're going to need is some wire. I've got copper wire. I've got, you know, like an aluminum kind of blue wire. You could do a combination, however you would like to. You're going to use some little wire snips, and you're going to snip off the little piece that you want. And even though you've glued on your edges there, you're going to just come back, it's kind of more decorative, and you're going to wrap your wire around your joints, basically. Your joint is kind of like, kind of like your joints. They join two things together. So you're going to just kind of go around and around, and then usually I like to go underneath and come back up again, and you can even make it where you make a little um, hook to hang it by. So you can kind of bring this up, leaving a little bit of a hook there. And this end piece, kind of pinch this together. You can just kind of go around a couple times. And then tuck any wires that are still hanging. And then you've got a little hook that you can hang it by out in the trees on your Christmas tree. It looks awesome. Um, the other one little thing that you might want to think about doing is if you want to, you can leave it just like this if you want, or if you want, you can also put 
some like an iridescent kind of paint on it and it'll just give it a little bit of sparkle. So normally, you know, I would put it on a plate and I would, you know, take my time, but we're going super fast today, people. We don't have time for that. So I just applied it straight on there and you know what? If you need to do that, go for it. So that just makes it super, super sparkly. Like I said, you don't have to do that, but it's, it makes it look really cool if you want to. And these look fabulous up on even your real trees out in the front yard, just to give a little, you know, little holiday fun. All right, that is project two. Moving on to project three. All right, project three. We are going to be making a faux stained glass. Faux because stained glass is typically made out of glass, but ours is gonna be made out of paper. So it's kind of like a pretend, like a fake stained glass, all right? So you're going to need some construction paper, and your construction paper, you can really make it any size you'd want to. If you wanna make this on a huge piece, you can. I'm gonna do mine a little bit smaller because this is the Holiday Express show and we are moving fast. So, a um, couple ways that you can do this. You can sketch out what you would like to do. That's a possibility and that's a very big possibility and that it can work that way. The one thing that you need to remember about stained glass is there are parts of the stained glass that it has to be held together by something so it has to have pieces in between. So what I mean by that is, let's say we were going to do, I'm just going to cut a shape. I'm going to fold my paper. I've got one that I sketched out and I'll show you here in a second, but I'm going to do like a little fast one. So you're going to take your paper. You want to have a border on it. So that means that you're not going to cut anything coming right straight off of here because you need basically like a frame to hold it all. So I'm going to just do... I don't know, some kind of crazy shape here. I'm just going to do this shape and then I'm going to come up a little ways from that shape and I'm going to cut another shape that comes up here. I'm going to skip a space and I'm going to do another shape. So now, when I open this up, I've got a candle. I'm so excited that turned out good. Okay, I've got these spaces in between, and this is like in a real stained glass, this would be the lead that holds the pieces of glass. That's kind of what holds everything in place. So you have to kind of simulate the lead with your pieces of paper, all right? So you've got to have these little things in between. So I showed you one way where you can fold it, you know, if you wanted to, you can take this, fold it a different direction this time. The one thing about this is you want this to be pretty symmetrical. Stained glasses, usually very symmetrical kind of work. So whatever you do on one side, you need to be able to emulate it on the other side. Um, so you could even, and I'll, I'll show you this way too, you can even get mom or dad to help you. You can use an X-Acto knife and you can Remember that you're going to want to give yourself those little shapes that, that stay in between. And you're going to very carefully cut out those shapes. This X-Acto knife is incredibly sharp, so be really, really careful. Get mom or dad or big sister, big brother, somebody to help you and you're going to cut these little pieces out. Remember that whatever you do on one side, you need to be able to do on the other. So I would suggest fold it in half, come back, and you can do your shapes just like you did them on one side, you can do them on the other side. You want to put something underneath you, like some newspaper or something underneath so that it doesn't cut the table. I'm being very careful to not go too deep, which is why I'm having to go over it a couple times, but I'm trying not to cut the table because I don't have anything underneath. But newspaper works great. Old magazines work great. That gives a good use for those old magazines. All right, so I'm just going to pop these shapes out. And I probably, you want to have lots of shapes in there. So you don't want it to just be, you know, one little thing. You want it to be very, very interesting. So I've now got 
some little lights that kind of radiate off of it. I think I'm going to go back to doing my scissors. So I'm going to fold this. And I'm going to do, I'm trying to think what kind of shapes I want to do. I'm going to make sure that I scoot over and I leave myself some spaces in between. And they can just be, you know, just kind of random kind of organic shapes. They don't have to be anything in particular. So now I've got some little things there. I'm going to fold this again. And notice that I've got mine and I'm folding both at the same time. If you wanted to, you could do just one at a time. But this, I think this works the best because then you know that you've got the same thing on both sides. I'm going to skip a little bit up so that I'm not right on it. And I'm going to very carefully, if I can get my scissors in there, cut my shape out. That didn't turn out really the way I wanted. Let me fix that. I'm going to go up here. Yes, I like that better. And then I'm going to do a little shape up here too. You want to kind of watch, too, what you've got on the other side so that you don't accidentally, you know, make any mistakes that you can't fix. All right, now, the next thing that you're going to be doing once you get this exactly the way you want it is you are going to be using some colored tissue paper. And it works best if you can get a glue stick, all right? just because it gives you, it's just not quite as runny. So I normally do not use glue sticks, but for this particular project, we're going to use glue sticks. So let me show you how this turns out looking. All right, so I have got, it kind of looks like a little crazy man, um, but that's okay. All right, so I was trying to do a candle here and then two smaller candles here, but hey, I'm rolling with it. If it's a crazy man, that works for me too. All right, so now you're going to flip this, and you can make either side the back. It doesn't really matter because they're the same. And um, I usually like to kind of decide what colors I want to use. I obviously know that I'm going to want my flames to be either an orange or yellow, so I kind of want to plan that out. And you're just basically going to tear small pieces of the tissue, and it has to fit and anything that hangs over, so by hanging over, I mean if it goes over into another little shapes area, that's not going to work because it's going to show from the other side. So it has to only cover only this area. So if it hangs off a little bit, just barely with your fingers, just tear off that little bitty piece. All right? So this one works pretty good for that, and I'm just going to very carefully, and it doesn't take a lot at all, just a little bit of glue, and then I'm going to lay that on here, and then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. And if you know, if you get a piece and it's too small, just get another one. Or if you get it on there and you accidentally tear it a little bit, I'll show you a way that you can kind of patch it a little bit. This one doesn't want to sit still. There we go. Sometimes if you'll kind of wiggle it around and move it, you'll find a way that you can make it fit. All right, so I've got this one on there. And you want to make sure that you flatten it out. Don't let it be wrinkly up inside there. So, um, and then I think I'm going to do, I think I want a blue candle. So I'm going to tear kind of a longer piece off. And I'm going to lay it on there. That way I can see where I need to kind of tear it because I don't want it to go into that other shape. And this is one of those things, you just have to kind of be patient. Keep laying it on there. Keep tearing off what you don't need. There'll be lots of that. So that's why I usually lay it on there first and see what do I need to take off and what can stay. And before it's all over said and done with, I'll have glue all over my fingers and pieces will be sticking to me. So that'll probably happen to you too, it'll be all right. All right, so I'm going to lay this on here very carefully. And sometimes you may need to shift it up just a hair, so just kind of slide it very carefully. 
And once again, make sure that you make it flat. Don't let it have any little wrinkles in it. All right, I'm going to purposely do one that is a little bit short. So if you end up needing to fix something, I'll show you how to do that. All right, so I'm going to tear this one like, oh, yeah, this is going to fit. And then I'm going to make it where it doesn't. And it's already sticking to my fingers. All right, so I'm going to do a little bit of glue. I'm going to lay this on here. And I got it too short. All right, so the best way that you can fix that, once I get that off my finger, is you're just going to re-tear another little piece. And this time you're going to put just a tad bit, I'm going to turn it this way so you can see, just a tad little bitty bit of glue on the tissue that's in front of it. And then I'm going to lay this on here, just overlap it just a tad bit. All right. So now I've kind of patched it, and when I flip this over here in a minute, you can see that you can't even tell that you patched it at all. So it's really no big deal. And let me see, I'm going to do one or two more little pieces, and then I'm going to show you one that's finished. And you can get really, you know, really, really intricate with these, especially if you're going to use the X-Acto knife. But make sure if you're going to use the X-Acto knife, you really need to get some help and make sure you put it on a surface where you can cut. One time when I was probably way too young to be using the X-Acto knife, I did. And let's just say I have the scars to prove it. So be really, really careful because it gets away from you. You think, oh, I can do this, no problem. And then all of a sudden it just goes, whoop, because that's exactly what happened to me. And then there's that I think I may need stitches. I don't want anybody needing stitches over the holidays. All right, so I've got another little piece. It's barely any glue. And we're just going to lay this on here. All right, I've got this little piece is going to show a little bit, so I'm just going to tear it off. Okay, so let me show you one that is finished. Looks like this. And they look, it's kind of hard to see on TV, but if you will hold this up to the light, it looks gorgeous. Really, really nice. And so this would be a really great thing to put up in your windows or on your door at the house that just, I mean, they look so beautiful when the light comes through. Now let me show you what the back looks like. When I flip this over, you'll see it's just all of those little pieces that are just kind of pieced together. All right, really neat and nice. There are a couple that I had to, I'm trying to figure out where I put it. I can't even tell at this point. I think I had to patch this one here. But when you turn it over, you can't even tell that it's patched. That doesn't belong. And then remember that this, these areas that right in between here, these serve as your, your lead basically for your stained glass. That is it for our express holiday edition of The Amazing Art Show. I hope that you and yours have a very Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays. Thank you so much for joining us. Now go out and make some fabulous holiday art.